Hello and welcome to our renovation chaos. This was the first project we tackled indoors since we moved to this house. The hallway and entrance. Since this room has such a big impact on how you feel when you leave the house and arrive back home and also sets the mood for your guests when they arrive, I wanted it to feel inviting, cozy and calming sticking with neutral colors and keeping it light and airy. I have always put an extra notice on how people's hallways feel like when I arrive to their house and I especially appreciate lit candles and a cozy feeling. This project has taken us about two months to finish because we've had so many other things to do but also because we wanted to pour our love and effort to this space to make it feel like home. The first thing we did was to clear out everything and put up the wallpaper. I chose this botanical pattern with neutral colors. We wanted paneling halfway and a border in between, so I only put wallpaper until that point. This was my first time to put up wallpaper, so Eric is helping me until I feel confident enough to do it by myself. It was really tricky with all the edges, but I think it turned out great. The results really are incredible. We didn't have experience in any of the things that we have done. It was a lot of firsts, research and teamwork. I really hope that you want to stick around for the rest of the video to see the process that went into this huge project and how much you can do yourself even if you think you can't. The overall style of our house is organic, timeless and calm. A mix between rural and modern. Since we live in a newly built house on the countryside, I feel like this style suits the best. And generally, it's the style I gravitate towards looking through Pinterests or interior shops. Wall decorations of any kind with paneling, borders, paint, wallpaper, etc. It's that one thing that I have always loved but never been able to do when living in apartments. So in this house, I am going all in, putting personality into every room. So here I am putting up the borders between the wallpaper and where the paneling is going to be. In the hallway leading into the living room, I wanted the trims to match the doors with a more modern look. And I painted that space in another video if you're interested. Mm. This is Neo, our almost three-year-old ragdoll. We have two cats and I will introduce Nova later on in the video. 
I also wanted to excuse my choice of fashion in these videos, but I don't want to get paint or glue on my regular clothes, so I am wearing pajamas most of the time. But as you could see, the days has been very rainy and we are snuggling up inside with projects like these. This is Eric gluing the back of the trims. We both glued and used a nail gun for this, since our walls are not completely flat and straight. I will then proceed to cover the nail holes and any imperfections with caulk and then paint it over one last time. This part of the video is what we are most proud of, and it's the built-in hallway storage. We had a section where the initial thought when designing this house must have been to have typical wardrobes, but we wanted to make it look built-in and a part of the house. I found inspiration from Pinterest and we started the process with the bench, which also acts like a shoe rack. We used wood slabs that Eric is putting together with different techniques to make it sturdy. This bench will also hold the wardrobe going on top. We love this natural wood and we have the same style on our bathroom vanity, which you can watch a video on if you are looking for inspiration. He used both pegs and pocket hole screws to put the bench together and the shoe rack itself was made using wooden sticks. One part of the built-in storage is an IKEA wardrobe, but we couldn't find cabinets in the right size, so we decided to make it ourselves using MDF. The assembling of the cabinets were quite straightforward using screws and then to cover up all the imperfections, the cracks and seams with putty. It was the mounting to the wall part which took a lot of planning and effort it was really heavy and our walls are made with gypsum boards on wooden beams 
It also had to go in perfectly straight since it's a really tight fit and then to be placed on top of those L-shaped things on the walls. And I had to hold it myself while Eric screwed everything in place, but it was such a perfect fit. And here you can also see the IKEA wardrobe next to me that we have already placed. To make the wardrobe look built in, we took our time to caulk and putty all cracks and spaces that we could see. We wanted it to be completely seamless, like it had always been there. After everything had dried, I sanded it down and prepared it for paint. And as promised, here is our other cat, Nova. I painted everything with the same paint that I used in the hallway. It matches the wallpaper perfectly and to make it look cohesive with the rest. On the wardrobe doors I used the same color but mixed uh, in with white to make it pop. I am going to put up the same wallpaper and paneling on the wall here and that is why I don't care about that the paint is touching the wall. And one thing I would do differently in the future is to put some sort of primer on the MDF boards and IKEA wardrobe. Uh, sanding it down didn't really help, but I will paint over with a sealer to avoid the paint coming off. I decided to paint over these, um, I don't even know what they are, but they are like a, a hatch for electrical stuff. <laughs> um, and there's also a vent here that I painted over because these things can be quite ugly and now they are blended in. We opted for a simple shelf and rack in the wardrobe and the cabinets are just like they are. I am using baskets as organizers to easily reach what we need from up there. It is such a relief to be able to put away clothes and shoes after living without hallway storage for two months. Luckily we are in summer where we don't need as much clothes. But here we are installing the wardrobe door, which is a simple task. This is when I sanded it down and then painted over it, wishing I used a primer. But you learn from your experiences and luckily I can tell you that you need to use primer and sealer or a paint made for glossy materials. Otherwise the paint will come off if you accidentally scratch it. I will update you the results after I have sealed it. And this is all the scrap bits left of uh, the wallpaper that I decided to puzzle together and use for this space, which took me days to be honest, but I managed to get something out of it and in the end it looks quite good. And it might look like there are two pieces of wallpaper, but they are about five or six that I glued together before putting, up, putting it up the wall. So here is the very very last bit and we are finished. We made the cabinet doors using MDF and besides painting the cabinet doors I put the same trim that we have on the walls around the edges. I feel like this elevated the look so much more and also bringing in the same cohesiveness with using the same trim and the same color as other parts of the, the house. And this was really really easy and effortless and I really enjoyed this part. We added the same ceiling trim that already exists in the house and I am glad we did this because now it really looks like a part of the house. 
This was also a very tricky part of the project, but so worth it in the end. <sighs> Final touches. We needed corner trims to finish the built-in wardrobe to hide every nook and cranny. I painted this with the lighter version of the color with white mixed in and then I nailed gun them to place. I, <laughs> you get the drill. I covered the nail holes with caulk and then I painted over it. In my vision, I imagined a rustic antique chest of drawers, but after two months of looking, I gave up and I bought this from IKEA. It didn't feel and look like a typical IKEA furniture. It has this rich dark brown color and detailed trim. And I switched out the knobs to make it look unique and it fits really well in the space, warming up the room. This is a pre-made panel board. All we had to do was measure, cut and mount it to the wall. We have purchased real wooden beaded panel that we're using for the office, but this was such a small space with a lot of different heights that we opted for the fabric made. All this needed was wood glue and a nail gun. Once all the paneling was placed, I proceeded with the last trims and details. We caulked and painted all gaps and nails. I feel like this is an ongoing theme in this project, but that really is what makes everything so seamless and beautiful.
Thank you for watching. I hope you'll subscribe for part two when it's finally time to decorate and make it even more cozy.